Well, g'day curd nerds. Welcome to another cheese making video tutorial. This one is about Pearson's square or the Pearson square. It is used to calculate fat content uh, in your milk for cheese making. Have you ever wondered how to get the right percentage of fat that is stated in a cheese making recipe? Not everybody has the same standardized milk fat content uh, in their pasteurized milk uh, that you buy from the store. So let me just show you a way on how to calculate uh, by either adding cream or adding skim milk to the standardized milk that you've got. Now, it's a very well-known technique, and it's called Pearson Square. Uh, and it's a way to quickly calculate a target milk fat for cheese making. So let me just uh, pop over to the Cheese Science Toolkit, and I'll show you how to do the calculation. So uh, here we are over on uh, Cheese Science uh, Toolkit. This is an easy way for standardization. Here's the calculation up here uh, for standardizing milk. So in the top corner, there's a calculator down below here. Uh, and uh, I will share the link in the video, in the video description down below. Uh, but the percentage of fat of the milk and the percentage of fat of the skim milk or cream, you can add, you can change this to cream if you like. Uh, and that gives you a calculation. Uh, but in the middle, you put in the percentage fat you want uh, for the resultant milk. Um, okay, so let me do some examples. So down here in the calculator, uh, it's got percentage fat in milk, percentage fat in skim. It should also have percentage fat in cream. You should be able to change that because... Uh, you can use it for cream and increasing the fat content of your milk as well. So let's say we want to make Parmesan and we want a 2% fat milk. Now, here in Australia, you can't get 2% fat milk. Uh, it is nigh on impossible. So let's plug in some figures and see what we get. So I want 2% fat, so 2.0 down here. That's the required fat content of the cream. So up here in percentage fat milk, so standardized milk in Australia is 3.4% usually. Uh, and the, um, the, the skim milk depends. You can get either 1% uh, skim milk or you can get 0.1%, which is a lot more extremer. So it doesn't matter what system of calculation you use. See, this could be pounds, this can be kilograms of milk, this can be liters of milk, this can be gallons of milk. So this pounds is a bit of a furphy. That's an Australian term for something that's not quite right. Um, so I put in 10. So that's going to signify 10 liters. Uh, or actually in the Parmesan recipe, it was 14 liters of milk. I wanted 14 liters. I put in 14 liters of milk. Um, so what I will need to add, so in whole milk, uh, which is the 3.4% up here, uh, down here, I would need 8.1 litres and the skim milk, I would need 5.9 litres and that would give me my 14 litres at 2% fat. So great little calculation. All right, let's say a recipe calls for 3.8%. Uh, or no, let's do better than that. Let's go Jersey milk, which is 5%. And you haven't got Jersey milk. All you've got is this standardized milk. In fact, you're living in Canada and they have a standardized milk of uh, 3.25. Now we want to get up to that. Uh, at the moment, it doesn't make any sense. And we've got a 10 liter recipe. So we'll change that to 10 down here. Uh, so I'm going to add cream. Now the cream I've got is pure cream and it's 35% fat. Okay, so what I would have to do to get a 10 litre batch at 5% fat, you want a high, you know, for a recipe that asks for Jersey milk or, a, or an Alpine style cheese, 
then we would need 9.4 uh, 9.4 litres and uh, 0.6 litres, which is 600 millilitres. Uh, so that's what you will combine together to get 5%. So that's amazing. One last calculation. So I buy milk, which is called Ingle Nook Dairy. It's a pasteurized, unhomogenized. Uh, and that milk uh, is 3.6%. Recently, I wanted a fat content of 48 for a, uh, a Gruyere that I was making. So I wanted it just a little bit less than Jersey milk. Uh, and the, the cream that I had was 35%. So what I had to do, uh, actually it was 3.8. Sorry, totally wrong there. 3.8% milk fat in my whole milk. And I had 35% fat in my cream. So let's plug those figures in. So I've got 3.8 here. I've got a required fat content of 4.8. And I've got cream, just ignore this skim bit, cream at 35%. I wanted a total of 10 litres. So I would have to put in 9.7 litres of whole milk or the 3.8% fat milk and 0.3% skim milk. So ladies and gentlemen, um, as it says down here, this method could be used to calculate how much cream you need to add to milk for cheeses with higher fat milks. Uh, in fact, Pearson the Pearson square method isn't just for dairy related calculations. It can be used to calculate components of any mixture while making spirit fortification, animal feed to name a few. So that's Pearson square. You can find it over at the cheese science toolkit. Uh, you just need to go to the link that I'm gonna put into the description down below uh, or on the screen right now. So hopefully that's been helpful for those of you who want to change the fat content uh, of your milk. Now, uh, if you wanted to find out if you had milk at home and you wanted to find out how what the fat content was, uh, you would need a tool to do that. So there's a couple of tests. There's a Babcock test, uh, which you can get a testing instrument for. Uh, but most of the dairy companies these days, or a fair lot of them, use a thing called a FOSS Milko scan, which is a device, big machine, that you put uh, a little sample of milk into, and it not only tells you the fat content, it tells you the uh, protein content, it tells you whether it's got any urea in it, which is urine, or urea is part from urine to make sure it's not contaminated. It tells you a whole bunch of things. Uh, so it's called Milko scan, it's very expensive. Uh, only a proper proper dairy could um, uh, afford one. So, uh, yeah, calculating milk fat for uh, cheese making uh, when you know the fat content uh, of the items that you're going to put in. So I'm going to be doing a series of these curd nerds, not only stuff from uh, the uh, cheese science toolkit, but lots of other stuff. So things like uh, ways with whey, so things to do with whey um, after you've finished cheese making. And also I've got another one coming up called The Good, The Bad and The Ugly, What Mold Is Safe To Eat? Um, so that'll be interesting. I'm doing research on that now. Now, if you want me to make more of these technical style videos, please leave a comment down below. Uh, let me know if you found it informative. And uh, if you enjoyed it, uh, give it a little thumbs up, give it a like. That would be lovely. Thanks for watching Curd Nerds and I'll see you in the next cheese making video. See you later, bye.